Portland, Oregon is the center of the college basketball universe this week. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. This is part of ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. You're watching the PK-80, presented by State Farm. Our game tonight, a quarterfinal matchup in the motion bracket between the seventh-ranked Florida Gators and the Stanford Cardinal out of the Pac-12 conference. We've got two brackets, one victory, one motion, two arenas going simultaneously. What we have here is Duke and Texas have already won their quarterfinal games earlier today. Florida Stanford coming up next. The nightcap should be a good one. 17th ranked Gonzaga against Ohio State. Now just across the sidewalk and driveway over in the Moda Center, the current home of the Portland Trail Blazers. Well, they're in a break right now, but UConn and Oregon currently playing over on ESPNU. So we have all day, all night, college basketball, two venues, one city. It is unbelievable. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Doug Sherman along with Dan Dockett. This is fun. This is awesome. We've got two venues. We're going to have two games going on. Michigan State plays later on over there. We earlier had Duke in a scare. I think the two games here are going to be fantastic. Well, let's start you off with the Gators. They have a tremendous backcourt, and we're going to feature three guys who all are really getting it done. Well, when you think about the Gators, you think about excellence. I mean, let's face it, Billy Donovan at all really set a tone. But these three guys, two of them are transfers, have been sensational. Igor Kulichov has been the leader. He got here as a fifth-year transfer, played in the World University game, started school after it began, and he's been nothing short of outstanding. And you see Jalen Hudson, the Virginia Tech transfer. I think Kevon Allen, uh, the kid there on the left of your screen, has continued because of the confidence, or has played really well because of the confidence he gained with an outstanding NCAA tournament, including 35 against Wisconsin last year. So this is a terrific matchup, great guards for Florida, and you see right now they're coming out of the tunnel that Bill Walton built. Mm -hmm. This is where Walton used to get it done back in the day, champs of 77. Big Red. Well, the Gators last year made their bones on the defensive end, doing it more offense. This guy, Reed Travis, in his fourth year with the Cardinal, getting it done at both ends. He is as productive a college basketball player as you'll find. Yeah, but you know what? Stanford has been disappointing. I mean, let's be honest. They are a veteran team. They're one of the most veteran teams in college basketball, and Travis has been exceptionally good. So you combine a veteran team with a star player, you would think they would have more success than to lose to Eastern Washington at home just shouldn't happen but he has been absolutely outstanding and what you like about it is this in an era where everybody plays well and then leaves or thinks about leaving going to the nba look at the numbers right there he's old school he's just getting better and better and better he's a fantastic kid and a great player not and, good great and you know what he's planning on coming back for his fifth year he got a medical red shirt because of a leg problem he's not thinking at all about shortchanging his college experience well let's be honest if if, if you're going to be like marvin bagley who we're going to show here a top five pick then go if not what is wrong with being on the farm and hanging out at stanford for Nothing. five years in palo alto Are you kidding me well you mentioned bagley boy duke number one he is really, really impressive. Well, let's get something out of the way. Duke struggled today, okay? And Bagley is really good. Think about this. Think about being a freshman and your first week on campus. You are the ACC, not freshman of the week, although he was, but the player of the week. That's how good this kid is. But here's the thing. Duke was down. Duke really struggled today. All right? They had to go zone. So here's what people are saying. Well, Duke having to go zone against Portland State shows you Duke is vulnerable. No. Get that out of your mind. Beating Duke is tough. You, if you play great and Duke doesn't show up once in a while, now you can play with Duke, but ultimately beating Duke is going to be an absolute chore. And look, today they needed zone. Tomorrow they might not need any zone, or they might need all zone. But Duke is really good, and Bagley right now uh, has to be among the top five players in college basketball. So PK-80, we've got... 23 combined NCAA titles out of this field of 16. You see right there, Mark Few in the middle, the national runners up. Gonzaga is here. And then you've got 89 combined Final Fours, Dan. Well, you, you have fantastic players. You see the freshmen there. You know, if you've got some good 50 year transfers, we're going to see one here in Kulachov. You have the best of the best. What I would like to see happen here is not give a trophy. I would like, well, give a trophy, but I'd like to see the trophy be a waffle iron. 
because that's the original. That's what Phil Knight used for the original waffle gym shoes, a waffle iron. So make the trophy into a waffle iron as we set and celebrate Phil Knight's 80th birthday. Well, exactly. Now, we haven't set it up yet. If you're, you're just tuning in now, the tryptophan is kicking in or maybe fading, and, and you're waking back up and saying, what is PK80? We are celebrating the upcoming 80th birthday of Phil Knight, the co-founder of Nike, who some 55 years ago, like you said, reinvented the wheel when it comes to footwear. He did. I mean, look, he, he was smarter than everybody. He figured out because he was a runner and because his friends were runners, he figured out what runners needed, and what they needed was a different shoe, more padding, more stability on the bottom. And going back, I used to sell shoes as a kid at a sporting goods store when they first came out. Waffle bottom shoes were the thing, and you learn later on, how did he make them? Literally, first ones he ever made, he did with a waffle iron. The old school, put the mold in, close it up, let it sit in there for five minutes, open it up, and he put it on the bottom of a shoe, and next thing you know, Nike's Nike, and he's Phil Knight. When was your first pair of Nikes? Knight? Oh, man, that's a good question. I, I'm not trying to age myself, but I sat out of high school in 1979, so probably 1979 when I probably stole them from Mr. Schmidt at the Athletes <laughs> when I was working there. <laughs> Nothing like vendor theft, big boy. Nice. That's how we open up the show tonight. <laughs> I love it. It is a hard habit to break, those of us who have been Nike devotees, and this event has been four years of the making, a combined effort between Nike and ESPN. We are well underway. We're going to take a break and come back with the opening tip of our quarterfinal game between the Stanford Cardinal and the Florida Gators. It's the PK-80 in Portland, Oregon. All right. In the wilderness of the Pacific Northwest, where two rivers merged in a hostile embrace, there was a settlement. The early arrivals called Stumptown. Some folks called it The Clearing. But in 1845, after three flips of a penny, everybody called it Portland. Portland, Oregon, the backdrop for PK-80. Our quarterfinal in the motion bracket, Florida and Stanford, just about set to tip off. It's all part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. We've got eight teams in this motion bracket, and look at that game tomorrow at 5.30 Eastern. Our first semifinal will pit Texas against top-ranked Duke. And for more on that game, we welcome in Jeff Goodman. Guys, this is the one that everybody wanted. Why? Marvin Bagley, Duke's talented freshman, maybe the number one pick in next year's draft, against Mo Bamba. Seven-footer, he's got a 7-9 wingspan. He's also a guy projected to go in the top five in next year's draft. They're very different. Obviously, Bagley more offensively skilled. We saw that earlier today. Was also able to grab 15 rebounds. Mo Bamba struggled, as did his entire team, to score the ball. But Bamba, what the NBA guys love about his length, his ability to run the court, alter shots. Offensively, he's certainly got a long way to go. And in this game, we've got an underrated big man named Reed Travis. He's a veteran. Duke wanted him out of high school, coming out of Minnesota. Plays hard, just needs to stay healthy. And he told me before the, before the game, he is healthy, and the big difference according to Jared Haas, how he utilizes him now. Instead of utilizing him, throwing the ball with his back to the basket, he's now got him facing up so he can do a little bit more off the bounce. He still wants him to score in the post, but do it a different way. Well, Reed Travis is a three-year captain from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and he was one of the holdovers when Jared Haas took over this program a year ago, 1997 Kansas graduate and trying to build things up where they can compete better in the Pac-12 year in and year out. They are picked to finish fifth in that league this year. And they will be taking on the Florida Gators. Stanford trying to improve on its 3-2 and record. Florida yet to taste defeat this year at 3-0. and And we are underway in this quarterfinal at PK-80. Isaac White on the back cut. She finds Oscar De Silva who missed the layup. What do you think about the uh, PK-80 uniforms we've got here, Dan? 
Uh, I like him. I also like that shot. I also like the pace that Florida played at. But I don't like Mo Bamba nearly as much as I like Marvin Bagley. Mm-hmm. Man, Marvin Bagley is something. Mo Bamba's got a long way to go. But I know, I think these uniforms are great. Everybody's got their own different style. Kayvon Allen off the mark. Well, you can see immediately that Chielza likes to go into the middle of the court. So, uh, you know, trying to make basketball simple for you. If you are Stanford, you've got to get him on a side and keep him on a side. Like, you cannot let a good point guard go anywhere he wants. He's already set up two guys for great looks. The Florida head coach Mike White says of his senior point guard, quote, I can't imagine there's a better passer in college basketball. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with him. I saw a guy in Matt Farrell for the last three days. I, I'm not sure in the time I've been doing games, you know, ball screen offense has really come into play. I'm not sure I've seen anybody find his teammates in a variety of ways more so than Farrell. But I'm looking forward to seeing Chelsea in person. And how about your travels coming back from Maui just to be here tonight? We appreciate you making making such a supreme effort. Well, it's a, it's a tough life. <laughs> you go to Maui, you do game. Look at, look at here. See, confidence is great. Four is to one. Coach Knight used to say the mental is the physical. Chelsea has been splitting time with Casey Hill, right? Now Casey Hill's gone. It's his team. He knows it, so he just goes. I like everything about See, you can't let any of these guys get into the middle. When you let these guards, or any good guards, penetrate into the middle, it breaks your entire defense down twice now, three times now, actually. Or is there to get in the middle. And, you know, Chioza for the last couple of years, while splitting time with Casey Hill, has led this team in assist to turnover ratio, and he's continued that here in the early going as the number one point guard. Allen forces the turnover from Travis. Quickly up ahead, the Gators. There's Kulachov with his first three. And Kulachov is a built tough kid from Russia, played in Israel, lived without his parents since the age of 16. He's 23 years old, averaged 20 at Rice. He just got whipped there defensively. Though. That's Mike, all right. Yeah, Mike Humphrey sealed him pretty good. Yeah, well, he scored three on one end. So okay. he gave up two, so he's up one. Plus one. Yeah. Here's Kulachov. Step back three. They're calling him three goal. <laughs> hey, he went Iverson. He shot it and put his hands in his pockets. You know, this Gators team made it to the Elite Eight last year largely predicated on the defense. But this Florida team, it's offense. It's definitely offense. And you can see, as I said right away, real quickly now, their defense hasn't been awful. Except for the two buckets inside, they've used their hands. The dunk in the layup, you mean? Yeah, that was not great. But they have come up with the ball a few times. Chioza backing down. Where'd he go? He went into the middle. What'd they get? Wide open shot. And a foul on the three that'll send Keith Stone to the free throw line. Igor, baby. You better find him. Look, he's running. He's ready. He just lifts up so easy. I mean, so easy. Watch this. He's going Iverson. Shots up. Hands go into his pockets. You're looking at the ball, not his hands. But that's all right. This dude can play. And this dude is tough. Confidence is a beautiful oh. thing. And, you know, he didn't even show up on campus until a couple of weeks into the fall semester. Yeah, he was with, we, he was with I think it was Russia in the World University Games. And, like, you know, he played against Purdue. Purdue was in the finals, lost to Lithuania. But, yeah, he didn't show up to start the semester. I'd say he's right on time. Averaging over 20 points per game, over eight rebounds a game. As Keith Stone buries all three free throws. Quick start for the Gators. And the reason Kulachov is here, there was a coaching change. Mike Rhodes left Rice and went to VCU, and Kulachov had graduated from Rice. So it was a fifth-year transfer. It came down to Oklahoma and Florida. Florida got him, and happy they did. 1,000 points, 500 rebounds plus at Rice. Travis had his shot blocked. Kayvon Allen with it. This is a smooth operator. Back to Chioza. Open look for Hudson, and the former Hokey has three. I'm going to beat this dead horse. Now, I know both staffs of the next game, Gonzaga and Ohio State, are watching. <laughs> you better not let Florida into the middle of the floor. They're going to kill you. 
Well, these early season uh, transfers are working out well for Florida. Yeah, uh, Jalen Hudson, contrary to public belief, was not trying to get away from Seth Greenberg at Virginia Tech. Coaching change there, I believe, and he took off and ended up in a great spot in Gainesville. Michael Humphrey, senior from Phoenix, Arizona, at the free throw line. He's one of the three captains this year for the Cardinal. They're actually this year called Peter Sauer captains. Peter was the captain of the 98 Final Four Stanford team who passed away in July of 2012. So Coach Hass and his staff, in conjunction with Peter's widow, Amanda, have come up with the idea of this being a Peter Sauer captainship. Uh, I recruited Peter Sauer to Indiana or went and saw him. And I'll tell you what, he was the absolute kind of guy that would take a team, be the captain of the team, and take him to the final four. You know, and, and he was just a terrific, tough guy, blue guy. And no surprise at all, based on what I, what little I knew about him in the recruiting process, that he ended up captaining a team to the final four. Good defense by the Gators. Chioza the takeaway quickly ahead. Kulachov to the rim. What a pass. I mean, what a pass by Chioza. He, he played, got the ball, had his head up, and just flipped it on a dime to Kulachov. This is Oscar De Silva into the corner. Reed Travis has been averaging a couple of three-point shots per game. As coach says, he'd prefer probably one per game, but that's a new part of his game. 18-7, the Gators off to a quick start. Look at Igor. Look at the left-handed across-court pass. Igor with the finish. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm and in part by Want It All from Nike Basketball. Well, Igor Kulachov has been the story of this game. Eight points, three for three, two for two from the three-point line. And, and I must correct myself, and I say thank you to Kevin Brockway, beat writer. Kulachov played with Israel in the World University Games. As soon as I said it, Kevin, I knew I was wrong. I wasn't sure. Uh, but I appreciate you correcting me on that because Kulachov, again, did not come and start school until after the semester started because he was playing in the World University Games and he was playing for Israel, not Russia, as I said earlier. First team All-Conference USA last year, 18 points, nine rebounds a game. He knocked him down at 47%. He's about that so far here this year in the early going. He is unbelievable. You know what's great about him is he's an adult. You know, he's an adult in every way, as we said. He, he has not lived with parents since he was 16 years old he's from russia he played in israel and you know he's not a guy that's going to come into a program and do anything other than make it better and the experience he had at rice it only tells you how it more tells you how good a player he was i think what he's doing here uh, adds to the kind of person he is see that's pretty good they didn't let him in the middle off the turnover, Robert Cartwright on the breakaway, 18-9. to nine. You absolutely have to stop Chioza from getting into the middle. I don't care if it's zone, I don't care if it's man-to-man. -man. He's too good, and the shooters around him are too good to allow any of these guys in the middle, particularly Chioza. Allen, Chioza, and Hudson around the perimeter for the Gators. This is Hudson for three. Count the basket and the foul. That just looked too easy. Now watch this. He just catches it, takes one dribble left goes up and knocks it in and it's just way 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 too easy right now you're looking at a team in Florida who is so comfortable offensively you know Cartwright was basically a fly on an elephant's backside right there trying to defend it he had nothing for him and you can't you can't play that way you've got to make a team uncomfortable back in the 80s for the Gators it was Vernon Maxwell and who's the other Eminem boy in the backcourt was it Moten yeah Moten I'm just feeling like, boy, they were fun to watch. I'm feeling the same thing about this team. This is a talented and deep backcourt. May I brag for a second? Yes. I gave Vernon, I gave Vernon Maxwell 23 in Market Square Arena when he, was a, when he was a freshman and I was a senior, and he tried to headbutt me. Nice. Now, I have a 20, I have an eight, eight, size 8 head, and I started making fun of him. Like, you have no idea who you're trying to headbutt him. 
And Norm Sloan, the Florida coach, called me every bad name in the book. Nice. I'm guessing Vernon had a thing or two to say. Vernon did, but I was giving it to him that day, so he couldn't say a thing. Just, I'm telling you, the only game I ever scored over like no, 10. No, that's not true. No, so it is. El- only game I ever scored over 10 or 12. Who else is on your hit list? Well, Michael Jordan. Well, I know that. That was your, the defense yeah, yeah. that you whipped in. This was, this was just outstanding offense against the former pro. <laughs> well, Sports Center coming up later on tonight. Herm Edwards in studio talking about the drama in Dallas with the Cowboys. Jesse Palmer on the best available SEC coaching job and Auburn's Iron Bowl advantage. All coming up 10.30 p.m. Eastern on SportsCenter. All right, can I tell you about coaching jobs in college football? Yes. Urban Meyer's a good friend of mine. Okay. So we've already got Jordan and Urban Meyer in. So if you're playing bingo, uh, <laughs> with what I talk about during the game. But if Urban Meyer did not go to Ohio State when he was working with us, he was absolutely going to go to UCLA. He loved Nice move. That's Dejon Davis, the freshman from Seattle. UCLA sent Urban a package. We're going to show Davis right here crossing over. Again, where'd he go? He went to the middle, crossed over. He was competing, Davis was. Chioza was just hanging out playing. And there's a big difference. The Florida fans, everybody thinks, well, Chip Kelly's going to go to Florida because it's a better job. Urban told me he could not believe the package that they sent him in terms of the UCLA job. So don't be surprised if UCLA isn't a major player for Chip Kelly. Okay. We cover a lot of ground in the broadcast. We do, and I'm keeping a list. Stone misfires. Rebound pulled down by the backup center, Josh Sharma, junior from Lexington, Massachusetts. Here's De Silva to the free throw line. You know, Davis could be a real program changer at the point for Stanford. Point guard play, backcourt play has been a problem in recent years. Absolutely. Like really good size, good leadership ability. You saw he can finish. He was originally part of Lorenzo Lo- uh, Romar's class in Washington with the Porter brothers. That triple by Cartwright. Hey, Robert Cartwright's a good player. He started 12 games last year. And he can shoot the basketball. He does not turn the ball over. He's 18 to 6 assist to turnover. Yeah, you relax here if you're Florida. This Stanford team is not going to go away. Yeah, Cartwright was a big time recruit coming out of Flint Ridge Prep in California. He was in the ESPN 100 at number 95. Stanford on an 8 0 run over the final or the, the last two minutes and 20 seconds here at Veteran Memorials Coliseum. And uh, right next door at the Moda Center. Currently over on ESPNU, UConn with a one-point lead. 13 minutes to go in the second half over the Oregon Ducks. Oregon Ducks just got a commitment out of Bowl Bowl, the son of Manute Bowl. Did you see the day that the guys that recruited Manute Bowl just made up his made up his age? No. He was being recruited. No. He just made up an age. Just gave him an age. So he may <laughs> as well have been 28 been when 18. he was at Bridgeport. Could have been 18. Nice. His son is really good. I mean, he's a top 10 recruit. National and Oregon, fortunate to get him. Jalen Hudson looks so comfortable. Again, you, you think about Kulichov and Hudson, 50 year seniors with a team. We're early, we're at Thanksgiving for crying out loud. These two guys are really comfortable. Feet went out of the Cardinal, and then De Silva gives up the foul at midcourt. Second personal foul on De Silva, so he and Humphrey for the Cardinal both had two. You know, you know what? That is a play that needs to come into college basketball, the foul in transition. We see it all the time in the NBA, right? We don't see it all the time. You know, we never see a two-for-one in college basketball. Right. And that foul right there is a good foul because it was going to be a bucket. Now you've got to set up and play against a stacked defense if you're Florida. Yep. You see it in international ball, professional ball. Kulichov. My goodness. He's got 11. Hudson's got 12. And the lead is back to 12. 
Kulichov making nearly 50% of his threes on this young season. Sharmano, Allen the rebound, and here come the running Gators again. Off the hesitation, tough pass. Scramble for the ball, three-pointer up. Ballard, no. And look at Reed Travis. Yeah, Reed Travis needs to start taking this game over a little bit. He, he needs to do it right in there. Now post up and get him the ball back. Isaac White, tough shot. There's a great player for Brazil called Oscar Schmidt. He's in the Hall of Fame. And Oscar Schmidt said there are piano players and piano carriers. Too many piano carriers are trying to make plays for this car. I hear you. I hear you. Hey, Dan, when is a duck also a cardinal? Ponder that. We'll explain when we come back here to Porto. <laughs> This, I decided. This is what sports are, what they can do. Like books, sports give people a sense of having lived other lives, of taking part in other people's victories and defeats. When sports are at their best, the spirit of the fan merges with the spirit of the athlete. And in that convergence, in that transference, is the oneness that the mystics talk about. Phil Knight. And I think most folks know that Phil Knight was a track runner at the University of Oregon, but not everybody knows that he got his MBA from Stanford, and uh, he has donated $105 million back to Stanford to build the Knight Management Center at Stanford's business school and so there he is back in the day at Stanford and uh, it's appropriate now Dan that we've got both of his alma maters playing as we speak here tonight in Portland. <laughs> Absolutely. Phil Knight, Bill Bowerman. Bill Bowerman's wife was the one who really see Phil there. She she used her waffle iron to get the thing done but Phil Knight obviously the work he's done <laughs> taking Nike and making it into a I don't know what the right word is. What, what, what would well, you call Nike? A, a global giant. Yes, and you know what his estimated net worth is? Tell me. $25 billion. You know what? Good for him. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, people in this day and age, we seem to begrudge that. I, I say, hey, guy had a great idea. Guy went to work. Um, and you know what? He's one of the great philanthropists of our time right. as well. He's given more than $2 billion back, and a lot of that has gone to his two alma maters, Oregon and Stanford. You know, when I was growing up, there were three runners, Rudy Chap and Kerry Pinkowski were two of them, and they went to Oregon, and I didn't understand it. You're like, why are you going to Oregon mm. from Gary, Indiana? Well, that's a heck of a play by Travis. He's got the biggest hands of any player out on the court right now. He's all kinds of big. Yeah. <laughs> you Man. know what I mean? To finish the story, then I found out about Phil Knight and Steve Prefontaine and all those guys, and I realized, well, if you're a great runner, you go, you go to Oregon. Hudson just keeps backing out and knocking down more shots. You know what's funny about Hudson's ball? It doesn't spin like a normal shot. It doesn't spin backwards. It spins a little bit globally, but when and sometimes if you hit the inside of the rim, it'll spit it out. But when you just hit straight net, like he's doing. Yeah, he's 4 of 5 from beyond the arc so far. Kulichov 3 for 3. You know, win a lot of ball games that way. Davis off the rim. Davis just went right by Chioza. Davis is a good player. Davis is going to lead Stanford to some pretty good things over his time. Sharma fouls Hudson on the shot. I, thought, I think this has to be for Stanford all day. Like right in there. Reed Travis has to get the ball in the middle or on the block. And everybody else except for this guy. This guy should be able to go and do some things. Deshaun Davis. But other than that, it's got to be Travis. First, second, and third if they're going to compete in this game. Yeah, Reed Travis is a big-time athlete, red, red shirt junior from uh, De La Salle High School in Minneapolis. He was a, a big-time high school quarterback who could have played D1 football if he wanted to, but turned down Iowa, Rutgers, Boston College, etc., to instead play hoops at Stanford. Well, I, with all respect to those other programs, he made the right choice. Oh, yeah. Palo Alto's, I've been to Iowa City. Offensive foul on Travis. Let's go to Jeff. He's got more on Stanford. Part of the problem that Jared House is dealing with with the Cardinals is that he's really missing his top three wings. Uh, 
uh, Marcus Sheffield, Dorian Pickens, both veterans, they're out with foot injuries probably for the next couple of weeks. And their freshman, Kizia Akpala, he's not academically eligible. So uh, they've got a tough time right now, but uh, Haas is not overly concerned. He thinks they're going to get better, and he thinks this program is in a good place, even if they do struggle a little bit here. What Haas has to do is get guys that could play like him. Like I, I remember watching him at Cal with Jason Kidd as kind of his running mate, and Roy Williams told the story that when Haas wanted to transfer, man, he, he remembered him. We were all in the same regional in 92 or 93. I think it was 93. And, man, Haas was so impressive that Roy had to have him. He got him. Gulichaw misses on the floater. He and Hudson have combined for 19 of Florida's last 21 points. Haas. Jared Haas. Jared Haas. 43-year-old native of South Lake Tahoe, California. You like Lake Tahoe? I love Lake Tahoe. Figured you did. Oh. Chioza dumps it off and gets an easy layup from Mike Okaru. And we've got an injured Cardinal. Looks like Cody Pugh. You know what you notice in person here? You, you, Doug, you, you really notice how fast Florida is. Mm -hmm. And you notice not only are they fast, but everybody runs really hard. And there's two reasons for that. One, the coach demands it. And two, it's a very, un oh, he's got a steal. It's a very unselfish team. So you run because you know you're going to get the rock. I know it's very early in the season and early in your first chance seeing the Gators, but they're ranked seventh in the country. Is that about right for what you feel about this team? I do. I, I, I do. And right now they're playing shorthanded as well. Tavarius Hayes has been suspended you know, for this game. So they're playing small, but, yeah, I, I just watched Notre Dame and Wichita State. Notre Dame's going to get in the top ten. Wichita State was sixth without their best player, McDuffie. These guys are certainly on par with both of those teams. Okay. Travis inside the three-point line. Had to force it up with the shot clock down. Davis saves, but it goes to the Gators. Kulachov. Dump it off for three. Stone. Small ball working. You know what I'm tired of? What's that? The guy's getting suspended in college. Like, a great education. You know, so now this Hayes kid has to sit back at home, and I'm glad that Mike White didn't bring him. You know what I used to do with kids that suspended? What's that? I used to tell them, get me. I'm not, you're not coming on the bench and everybody's patting you on the back and feeling sorry for you. You're going in the weight room with the weight coach, and you're going to work out for the two hours during the game. And good for Mike White for just leaving the kid at home. Look, I need you here if you don't want to do what the program de demands. Okaru with another three. Everybody for the Gators is getting into the act. And look, nobody bigger than six foot five. I mean, this is just an absolute clinic that Florida is putting on. Yeah, the official word on Hayes suspended one game for a violation of team rules. So he's back at the team hotel with the idea that he will be able to rejoin the team tomorrow night. Yeah, and I'm glad they don't need him. Good. Win without him. Stone's pretty good. The Gators are pretty good. Look. Have nobody around him. Stone just steps into it and chops him. Boom. <laughs> hey. Thank you again for sharing part of your Thanksgiving with us. We are at the PK80, presented by State Farm in the motion bracket. Duke and Texas already into the semifinals. We've got Ohio State and Gonzaga still coming up, but the team that's hot in this game so far, no doubt about it, the Gators collectively, Dan, 9 of 12 from three-point land. You know, that was really the only tough three that they took. Look how wide open these guys are. And this great ball movement, pace. They're just really comfortable. The thing you need to do offensively is to find something comfortable. The thing you need to do defensively is to speed the offense up, and Stanford has absolutely not done that. Igor Kulichov and Jalen Hudson have been leading the way. Hudson's got 17 points, while Kulichov has 11. And they're not the only ones doing it up 19. 
All right, Dan, i got a question for you. A lot's been made on the ESPN networks the last couple of days about those of you who were out at Maui the last few days, took the red eye to get from Maui here to Portland, so you and Jay Billis, Dan Schulman, the three of you came back. i got to ask you, while you guys were all getting your rest in first class, who was snoring the loudest? <laughs> I, I couldn't oh, dude, a nice speed. Again, I don't blame Mike White, for, I will get to that, for calling timeout because two plays in a row, Stanford outplayed, outhustled Florida. All right, we'll take a break. I want to hear more about the snoring. <laughs> All right, Dan Dockage, give me a little play-by-play -play of you guys getting on the plane late last night. Well, there's Billis. He's working, and his is disgusting. This is the back of my head. It's just disgusting. I have four women in my life, my mother, my daughter, my stepdaughter, and my, and my wife. And they won't let me shave my head, but it's got to happen. Well, Schulman and Billis were Jeez. giving you the business before this game saying, just get rid of it, Dan. No. I, I, I'm with you. I, I, I want to. I want to shave my head. They were also giving me the business because of my daughter, my stepdaughter, and my wife had to sit back in steerage. I wasn't. You think I was changing with them? Get out of your mind. They walked right by, and I'm like, go, go. Hey, Billis, get us more champagne here, Billis. More cake. I want more cake, Billis. And Billis, when Billis gets on a flight, man, it's they serve that man. Really? Oh, it's unbelievable. He's got really? some status that only, like, double secret probation people get. So, like, you and Dan were getting milk or water or you know, <laughs> soft drinks. We were totally coattailing. We want Billis' champagne. So now, give me the dirt. So Billis says he was working. He was. Shulman says he got some sleep. He did. You got some sleep. Out. I Who, talked for so a while. So you were snoring the most. Probably. No, I, I don't snore, but I was talking for a while with a uh, uh, scout for the Miami Heat. We were sitting next to each other, going over players. So I assume that's work, but yeah, I got to tell you, that, that overnight flights are I don't know about you, but they're tough on me. Yeah, no thank you. Yeah. At least you got some sleep. You skipped Thanksgiving dinner, though, today. We went to Cracker Bear. Yeah. Well, you didn't make it, though, right? No, I was working out and working, so my wife went to Cracker Barrel. Well, Cracker Barrel's good on Thanksgiving. I Cracker Barrel's good any day. You're right. You're right. Well, myself and a few members of the crew, we were able to get out and enjoy a little Thanksgiving turkey this afternoon while you were getting your hard-earned rest. You know, one of the things that I know a lot of people have known forever, but coaches really don't, and I've talked to a ton of coaches over the last few days about this, you, as a coach, you never know Thanksgiving. You just don't. You're practicing twice. You're making sure your team gets to eat, or you're traveling to a game, or like these guys have a game, you're in a hotel. But I'm of the belief that Thanksgiving is the greatest holiday in the history of the world. You don't have to buy presents. You get to eat. You get to sit around. There's nobody that tells you to do anything. And this might be the greatest Thanksgiving of all time because usually you sit down and watch football. This year you've got football, but you've got PK-80. Yeah, and football was awful today. Like, is Zeke Elliott that good? Yeah, the Cowboys are, are weird. Yes, he is that good right there. Chioza. Boy, the Gators are on fire. you got to give the Gators credit. They score and they don't flinch. There's no acting up. There's no you know, pounding their chest. They just play. And as I said, I like the fact I like the fact that they suspended uh, Hayes, and they're showing they don't need Hayes. Hayes needs them. How do you get suspended? I wish I knew. You were a longtime coach. You'd know better than I do what goes on. Yeah, I, I just, you know what? I mean, you got a guy that's running a program in Mike White. You got a bunch of great kids that, that share the ball, play for each other, and you're going to go act like a clown. I don't get it. I, I just, I don't get it. Well, you mentioned Mike White in his third year as head coach at Florida. He's a former Ole Miss Rebel, graduated back in 2000. One of the bright young coaches in our game. Offensive foul. Got great staff, too. Jordan Mincy was a terrific player at Kent State as a point guard. Dusty May was one of our managers at Indiana for Coach Knight. He's been all around. These are tireless guys. You know, Billy Donovan always had that. Billy Donovan always had guys that just went out and worked and were basketball junkies, and that's exactly what Mike White has. Has he got this program back where it was? Yep, I believe he does. Kayvon Allen drives and dishes. Hudson passes up on the three, gives it to Chioza. Kulachov 
If you're defense, where do you go? Who do you run at? You've got to figure out, I've got to guard you and keep you in front of me. There's too much help because the individual is breaking down uh, against an the, against his, his opponent. Just nobody guards their own. Steal by Allen. He's got Hudson. Hudson back nice. to Allen. The dunk oh. came halfway down and then back out. Boy, was that a nice feed. I'll tell you what. You've got two veteran guards perfectly integrating the transfers in. They have all been unselfish, and that's why it's working. There's no question. Now on the other end, Davis and Reed Travis have to be the two guys. They just have to be. Humphrey with the dunk. Stanford trying to make a push here before the break. Kulichov, a little strong. De Silva clears the glass for Stanford. I'm spreading it and letting this kid go a little bit. Trying to find Humphrey in the post. Like to me, Davis is too unselfish. Like, Davis stood out there and directed, and that's fine. But I think he's got to get a little more selfish. Nice. Like that guy. She owes a right he to just, the rim. And that was terrible. Let, let's be honest. That was terrible by Stanford. Stanford was back. Davis was back. And they, again, they're just out here playing a game. Stanford, or excuse me, Florida is out here competing to win a game. Cartwright gets to the bucket. The high ball screen will work. It's got to be Davis, I guess. If he doesn't want to go, then you go with Cartwright. Kulichov. Three more. He's made five three-pointers here in the first half. And he's yet to miss <laughs> from distance. Five for five. Man. So when you were lighting up Mad Max, you were doing the same thing? No. No, I was going on the block with him and hooking on him. It was unbelievable. <laughs> One day of my life, right? <laughs> Another steal, and Chioza with two more. He's got nine. Timeout, Stanford. Yeah, you know what Mike White or who Mike White is thankful for? Igor. A lot of things to be thankful for, but that guy's one of them if you're Mike White. Five for five from three. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm and in part by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. The PK-80 has 16 teams playing 48 games, two brackets, two venues side by side. It is a one-time deal that if you're a College Hoops fan, you cannot miss. And we have our game here, Stanford and Florida going on. And then across the way, UConn and Oregon at the Moda Center playing a thrilling game right now. They are 56-53, uh, 6.20 to go. Dan Dockage, UConn has Jalen Adams, Altariq Gilbert, Terry Larry are back. They're all in double figures in that game tonight. Where's UConn right now coming into the season early on? Well, I, I, they're better. You know, I think they're much better. I think their league is really good. You know, yeah. Cincinnati is really good. And when you look and, and you think about UConn, what do you think about? You think about Final Fours and National Champions. You and I were talking off air. Who have we seen? We're seeing one tonight that sure. I think could be that good. I'm not sure UConn is that, but I think UConn is better. Well, guard play is so important, especially in March, and this team in Florida has it in space. No question. No question. I, I saw one in Notre Dame that has it right. between Gibbs uh, and Matt Farrell. I, I, I I know Wichita State is as good as any, particularly when they get McDuffie back. Yeah, so veteran guards. You think about Carolina last year. You think about Villanova the year before. I mean, the two, last two national champions, that has been a big part of the equation. You know what's amazing? How good has how good has North Carolina been with all that they've lost? Yep. You know, and they today just dismantled another team. They came out here early and beat Stanford by 22. They're just really, I swear Roy Williams could take you, me, the right. referee, Dave Warlock, our stats guy, and we can go <laughs> win a bunch of games, man. I'm telling you we could. Well, it further reinforces the fact that he is among the elite. You know, he's an A. Smith Hall of Famer, but uh, with Reed Travis getting the end one. 
you know, with what's been going on the last few years in Chapel Hill, they've not been involved in the one-and-done guys. He has recruited in a different manner and got three- and four-year guys and been just as, if not more, successful. Yeah, and he lost one this year, Roy Williams did. Uh, he lost Tony Bradley, who I thought was going to be the next guy. You know, he ended up having a decent tournament, went to the NBA. But I'm telling you, going back to the 80s when he first started at Kansas, he just he can take anybody and win with them. Does not matter. And we are watching one of his many proteges here in this ball game. Although Jared Hass's Stanford Cardinal on the losing end, Kayvon Allen called for the foul. Nice job by Dejon Davis. Now to end this half, you've got to go and get at least a touch for Reed Travis on the block. It just has to be. You saw what happened last time down. He went and got a bucket. They, that has to be their thing for this second half, starting last possession through this possession. And you know what? Last game for Stanford was on the farm, and Roy brought his Carolina Tar Heels to Stanford and played his former player. And it was a great game for Stanford to have. They had the first sellout in a long, long time. But uh, that is the relationship that Jared has with his longtime coach. He worked, of course, at Kansas and at Chapel Hill under Coach Williams as well. Coach Williams, going back before him, Coach Smith, Coach Guthridge, Matt, Matt Doherty, everybody, always played games at different places. Mostly it was at recruits' play. I remember Jawad Williams, they played a game in Cleveland for him. He's always done that, uh, not only him, but the entire program for years and years and years. Isaac White has his first three for Stanford. They got that bucket you were talking well, about. Well, they had to. And, you know, 1-3-1 one, one zone, they were paying attention to the baseline, and Isaac White wide open. Shot clock and game clock within a second of each other, so the Gators with Chris Chioza at the point can hold for a final shot. And here goes the senior from Memphis, Tennessee, with six seconds to go. Hudson's going to have to hurry. Back to Chioza. It went in, but was it in time? The call on the floor right now is that it's good, but they will go over to the monitor to check to see if he got it all. I think he did. Uh, it's going to be very, very close, but fitting, that's how you're going to end the half, regardless of whether they count it or not, right? Under control the entire way, Chioza never panicked. No, Chioza did not panic. Yeah, well, it's gone. Chioza got in a bad spot. And like all good players, see, he got it out of that spot. Like he made the pass, didn't stand and watch, and then moved to an open spot. That's what you do if you're a good player. Let's go over to Jeff. Mike, you're up 22. You're shooting lights out, 13 of 17 from three. What do you tell your team at halftime in, in terms of trying to get better here? Do the same exact thing, Jeff, right? Same exact thing. Um, I didn't say it coming offensively for us. We're, we're a good shooting team, and I hadn't seen any numbers. That's pretty staggering. We can't obviously expect to get that again. Got to do a better job on, on Reed Travis and on the interior. Got to guard without fouling. He's a handful. Igor Kulichev, Jalen Hudson, two transfers. Do you just keep recruiting transfers? Why not, right? Why not? They've been pretty good for us. They're good players. They're great kids. Uh, we're in a pretty good rhythm here, but we've got a ways to go. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Joe. And now we see Coach White getting the word that we're hearing in our headset that the half is not over. And so they're bringing the players back out from their respective locker rooms. It was a shot clock violation. So again, he had to get it off before the end of the shot clock. It wasn't so much the red light around the uh, backboard that signifies the end of the half. Yeah, I got to tell you, I was looking at the uh, the game clock. Yeah, I mean, there it is. The shot clock is obviously the zero on the bottom, and so the ball is touching his fingertips. And so take those three points off. It's a shot clock violation, and now Stanford has eight-tenths of a second to try and do something. Well, you can get a shot off. Somebody better come up here and get in front of Davis. He can't move, and he needs to know. He needs to make sure that Michael Humphrey needs to know he cannot move 
Now it's beat a little easier because he's on the side. We also had cheerleaders still on the floor. They had we to did. get them <laughs> off the floor. Humphrey was a high school quarterback. There's the gun. Isaac White got a good shot. Coming up on the Land Rover Halftime Report, highlights and a recap from today's action here at PK80 and the hot shooting of the Florida Gators. That's all coming up at the half. The Gators never trailed. Biggest lead, 25 points. The action continues here from Portland over on ESPNU. UConn and Oregon going right down to the wire. We'll have much more coming up from our side of PK80. It's all Gators shooting lights out. Stay tuned for the Land Rover Halftime Report after these messages. My man. 8.39, our score. All Gators for those first 20 minutes. Stanford had no answer for the outside shooting of Florida, led by their two transfers who were absolutely brilliant. Well, they were led by a lot of guys. These two guys, just look at that. Nine for 11 from the three-point line. Now, look, we expect a lot out of fifth-year seniors, but that's a lot. It that's is. that's incredible. The State Farm assist of the night, not one of those two guys, but it's their senior point guard, Chris Chioza, with the assist of the game. He's already got eight assists, and we're only at the break. Eight assists, only one turnover. He's made basketball look really, really easy. This pass was sensational. Left-handed, you cannot let him into the middle of the floor. The game started out, Stanford, the Cardinal, was letting him go wherever he wants. You have to make him uncomfortable. They're going to go to a zone here, a 3-2 zone, to start the second half, try to keep him out of the middle. At Indiana or at Bowling Green, did you ever have a team make 13 threes and a half? No, but I had a team shoot 13 or 15 in the second half. From, from okay. Total. How about that? Just straight drive, left hand, get to the rim, nobody's contesting it. 19 points for Kulichov to lead all scores. Hudson's got the 17. Well, those 13 threes is a new Florida program record for a half. And the game record for the Gators is 19. What do you think about Stanford going to their money man inside? That should be all day, all second half. If it does, they'll have pretty good offense because Reed Travis is not selfish. But that should be where the ball goes first, second, and third until Florida stops it. Humphrey with a block shot. Let's go back to Jeff. More on the Cardinal. First thing is an injury update. Cody Pugh uh, re-injured his ankle, had it taped, and is likely to come back in the game. Number two, uh, spoke to Jared Haas, and he was obviously upset at the effort. He said he wants to see more resiliency than anything else. Some fight out of this Stanford team. When is enough enough? He wants to see some, some fire out of this team in the second half. Well, another turnover turns into an easy two for Kulichov. Just You look at Florida's bodies. These are men's bodies. These aren't kids. These aren't freshmen. These are built kids, built men, actually, that have been in the weight room, have had summers, and, man, they just take the ball away. They recover quickly right there. Block the shot by Allen. You know, Florida has forced 10 turnovers and scored 20 points off of those 10 takeaways. And they've done it with their hands. They haven't done it necessarily by getting into a passing lane, but they've stripped the balls. They've gotten, when it's been a 50-50 ball, as Coach Haas was saying, you know, they haven't, really there hasn't been enough resistance by Stanford for loose balls. They've just been beat to them consistently. Florida playing without Kivarius Hayes, the junior forward suspended for this game due to a violation of team rules so Florida with Kayvon Allen starting again here in the second half with th uh, four guards rather and really playing small Keith Stone is the only guy over six foot five on the floor and this is not a bad way to play now if you could rewind this and coach Haas could go back I promise you promise you he would have put Reed Travis on the block and not, never moved him from there offensively. And it would have solved a lot of their turnover problems. Now the only guy who had not gotten into the scoring column, thank you for my coffee there, Dave, was <laughs> Kayvon Allen until those two free throws he had not scored tonight. It didn't seem to bother him either. No. You know, he's playing defense, he's guarding folks. This is a this is a very impressive team. And I mentioned it in the first half that you don't necessarily always assume 
that returning veteran players are going to be as unselfish as clearly Chioza and Allen have been. Oh, my gosh. You, you couldn't be more right. You know, you almost assume now that a, a, the older a guy gets, the more he wants to audition for the NBA, and there is absolutely none of this on this Florida team. I'm telling you, good things will happen if the ball continually goes into Reed Travis, and bad things will happen for people that are playing against him because he is big and he is strong. And, you know, they say his weight is the same as it's been in years past, 245 pounds, but he's more cut, more chiseled. He has changed his look this year. That is not a guy I'd want to try and box out of the block. Next door, UConn is about to win. So the Ducks will drop to 4-1, and one, and the Huskies will improve to 4-0. and oh. That's part of the victory bracket of PK-80. We are in the motion bracket at the Veteran Memorials Coliseum. Another turnover, and the Gators get a good look. Kulichov missed the layup, though. Well, that was the first time, really, all game that Stanford sprinted down the floor with the Gators and got in front of the rim and made Kulichov take a tough shot. Off the baseline, out of bounds. Clean look for Cartwright. Totally forgot where he was. Nobody, everybody was playing the inside cross screen. Nobody even paid attention to Cartwright out on the left baseline. And you mentioned in the first half, Dan, Cartwright's a, a good player. You know, he was a top recruit coming out of high school, and he's the one who suffered Kulichov, the easy reverse. But Cartwright suffered that uh, nasty broken right forearm in practice and missed his freshman year. He had a compound fracture of his own in radius, had nerve damage, shattered the elbow, wound up having multiple surgeries, and that's why he still wears the right sleeve on his arm, the, the sleeve on his right arm to keep it warm. He may be the only guy that wears a sleeve on his arm on purpose. You know, for a reason. Everybody else wears it because Allen Iverson wore it. <laughs> De Silva travel. Well, over in the uh, victory bracket, UConn has officially moved on to the semifinals with an eight-point win over the Ducks. And so coming up at midnight Eastern, you've got uh, a rather 11.30 Eastern, Michigan State and DePaul. So the uh, fourth-ranked Spartans, another one of the preseason favorites to get to uh, the Final Four. What do you think about Sparty? I, I think they're as good a team as there is in the country. I, I, I was really disappointed in two things in their loss to Duke. Number one, their want to. I mean, they've never really stepped up and competed against Grayson Allen. The second thing was they weren't very good at all. I mean, not at all against the zone that Duke threw at them. That was disappointing, but I'm not worried about Sparty. Bridges may or may not play tonight. Uh, but Sparty is going to be just fine. The class of the Big Ten, I've got him winning a national championship. Really? What do, do you think about their big freshman? Um, I think a couple of things. I think uh, Jaron Jackson is really good. And I think that for him at the end of the year to be great, in-season weight workouts are going to be huge for him. Tom Izzo and his crew, they lift weights during the year. He can't skip any or he can't be tired. The more he does of that, because the only thing going to slow him down is a big physical team that really comes at him. Because he's, he's uber talented. So he, he can get much stronger during the season, and that would be a huge deal for him. DeAndre Ballard with a three-point play for the Gators and a much more proactive Reed Travis driving hard again and drawing the foul for Stanford. I would give him the ball in that area and clear it out. It, it, people call it LeBron because that's what the Cavaliers used to do, basically a, you know, four corners with a guy in the middle and figure it out, LeBron. Well, that's what Travis needs to have for him in this game. Well, we talked about how Reed Travis has reworked his body. He's also completely overhauled his shot from his freshman and sophomore year to where he is now. He's worked so hard with assistant coach Jeff Wilbrun, and it doesn't look anything like it used to. Well, he, he came in as a eight-foot shooter, maybe. You know, I mean, maybe. And now he is a – he can shoot the basketball. I mean, he's not Rick Mount, or he's not, you know – 
but he's, he can shoot the ball. And Davis, nice. coast to coast. I was watching Travis in the shoot-around before today's game. He was making eight out of every ten jumpers from the three-point line. Yeah, and I'm not saying, you know, sometimes that translates, sometimes it doesn't. Because when you shoot them in practice, you know it doesn't matter. You miss, you get another one. Game, you're not going to shoot eight of them. You're not going to shoot ten of them. But he certainly is a guy that I think can make shots, and I think he's a guy that's going to play at the next level. First made field goal for Kayvon Allen. Travis against the double team. I'd go right back into him. Well, they won't get the opportunity. It's another Chioza steal with numbers. Hard oh, foul man. and a chance for three again for DeAndre Ballard. <laughs> Little volleyball from Chioza. One, two, three taps. And a great finish. You like this kid? Look at this. One, two, three. And he comes, flips it behind. Spectacular. Coming up, Jeff Goodman will show us how you get the best seat in the house. You pay Phil Knight. <laughs> Back here, Florida beating Stanford here in Portland, the PK 80, 73 50. And I have the best seat in the house here at the PK 80. So far, I'm six for six, going to all the games today, back and forth. And basically the key to it is, you gotta be a little bit quick, right? I mean, here's how I did it, all right? This is the, the path I take. We sped it up a little bit because I'm really not that fast. it's forever. No, it really didn't take that long. Look <laughs> at me, I go through the door, I go down, it's not raining. I got the ESPN truck on the right there. Nobody's really paying attention because I'm so fast. Blazing speed. I go through the door, and I'm going to check out, like, is Miles Bridges going to play tonight? I go through. I'm in. And there we are. And I go back and forth like that at that warp speed all day. I mean, seriously, I'm like Chris Chioza. Have you got a Fitbit on or something? Yeah, I want to know how many steps you've got. I, as of last game, I had already walked four miles. Nice. Four you, miles today. You are the only person I have that one would cookie. ever compare yourself to Chris Chioza. You are also the only person that would ever compare you to Chris Chioza. Salute. <laughs> Great time. Great time. we got to do this again every oh. year. Gonna Jeff, say we'll do it again tomorrow. Jeff, let me ask you. It's true. So far, you've been at all these games. What's impressed you most? Uh, I mean, first, it, it started with, with Portland's resiliency. I mean, they were tough. Like, to me, Duke got out, out tough. Portland for most State. Of that game. Portland State, I'm yeah. sorry. Portland State. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, to me, Duke didn't bring it hard. I think it'll be a wake up call for them tomorrow. Texas Butler was ugly. Over there, UConn just beat, uh, they just won. I think we got two really good games early because you got Arkansas that was knocked out of the tournament last year by Carolina. I was at that game, they almost beat them. So they're ready to go tomorrow. And then you got the, the Mo Bamba, Marvin Bagley. And I know what you said earlier, Dan, about Mo Bamba, that you're not feeling it yet, but you know what he is? He's a great defensive player. And if he buys into that, you love him. If he tries to do too much on the offensive end, you start to get a little bit frustrated. Let me ask you, you've seen you're at Champions, you're at all, you've seen everybody. Where does Florida fit? Right now, I mean, yeah. they're not going to shoot like this all year, but I, I love these guys right now. I mean, Jalen Hudson's still got to get tougher, but Kulichev, he might be my favorite player in the country right now. I mean, think about this kid's story. Arizona State, then he transfers to Rice. He ends up here. Oh, by the way, Mike White sees his name on a transfer list, calls him, tries to recruit him, and you know what Kulichev says? He said, have you seen me play? And Mike White says, you know what? Honestly, I haven't. Kulichev says, all right, watch me and then call me back. That's what I said earlier. Kulichev is a man. Like, a, a kid would just say, oh, it's great, man. Florida's recruiting me. A man wants to go to the proper situation, right? I mean, he Absolutely. is a fifth-year kid. You've got to go to the place that fits you. You can't mess around. You can't guess. The kid didn't guess, and he made Mike White not guess. Is there a better grad transfer than, than Igor? Yes. Who? Oh, Andrew, I know. Andrew <laughs> Dock. I knew that was coming. That was a dumb question. <laughs> we're we're going to get into Ohio State later in your final four pick. We, we won't start that yet. Uh, you asked a question. I gave you an answer. I can't help if you don't agree with it. 
I think the country sides with you, but hey. You're a proud dad. Yes, sir. Well, you guys have both mentioned the fact that Kulichov left home at the age of 16. He came to the United States and went to Florida and played high school ball at the Sagemont School, and so he has basically been on his own for six, seven, eight years. Yeah, that's a hockey thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. hockey kids will go you know, play juniors somewhere. Or that's a tennis thing. Kids will go to IMG Academy and they'll leave. But you don't see that a whole lot in basketball. You know, usually somebody comes here. We, we've seen kids escape the Sudan and go to Australia, that kind of thing. The left-handed hammer by Cody Pugh. Good to see him back on the floor and elevating. Well, the message at halftime by uh, Coach Haas uh, it got through. You know, you, you can tell. this is They're playing hard. They're not, they're not as good as Florida. And Florida, as Jeff just said, it lights out and all that kind of stuff. But you get the sense that they're competing far better. The tip slam. My goodness. That's Dante Bassett, a 6'9 freshman from Oakland, getting his name into the box school. What timing. You know, not only athletic ability, but you've got to have some want to to get there and then time it up and go get it. Hard right is fouled. Well, here's a freshman just splitting guys and two-handed off of a jump. Watch this. Here he comes right down the lane. He's got his arms out. He's getting guys out of his way. He just came in the game. I'd say that stress fracture that sidelined him last year, it's all healed up nice. Uh, Looked like it, unless he just heard it from being up too high. Travis from the high post. Oops. Travis. Well, Florida's doing exactly what you have to do. You, you have to double. You have to build a wall around him and make him kick it out. He's really good. Yeah. Reed, Reed Travis is really, really good. They came into this game averaging over 21 points per game, six and a half rebounds a night. Cave on Allen. Oh, he is smooth. Here's what happened. He went left. They jumped him hard. Cartwright did a good job of walling him off. So he spun back to his right and was still able to knock it in. Here he comes again, three on one. And Humphrey hammers him. And Allen comes away making sure all of his teeth are in the right spots. Hey, kids practice threes a lot of different ways, but I'm not sure they practice it this way. Watch this. Walled off pretty good by Cartwright, and it just spins back, kicks out, drills. Look at that. That is not easy. You know why he's able to make it? When he shoots the basketball, his shoulders are in front of his feet. And in the post, mid post, you can lean back, but it's really difficult to make a shot like that unless you get your shoulders out in front and squared. He did and drilled it. Look at that body on him. Yeah, the, uh, the junior from North Little wow. Rock High School has really grown into a first team all SEC player, no doubt. 35 against Wisconsin, Elite Eight, got to the Elite Eight. He's still making sure his jaw works properly, back defending De Silva. White, no. Gators have it. This is the largest lead of the night for Florida. They uh, led by as many as 25 in the first half. And at this point, if you're Coach White, do you think it all about tomorrow yet? No. No, I'll tell you why. All it has to do is happen to you one time in your coaching career where somebody makes a huge comeback and you hang on for dear life as long as you can. I was watching the other day, Northeastern Ohio State. Ohio State was up about 20. Nice shot. 20, 24 the whole game. All of a sudden, five straight threes made it a 10-point game, and it got sexy. Miles Bridges and the Michigan State Spartans are about three and a half minutes away from tipping off. You can see that game on ESPN from here in Portland. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. It's cross-conference chaos of the best kind. The Big Ten ACC Challenge starts Monday. Well, Jaron Jackson and the Spartans now tipping off about 10 minutes 
from this point as they push the tip time back a little bit. And in that Big Ten ACC challenge, Spartans against the Fighting Irish. What do you think about that game? The Spartans are really good. The Fighting Irish are really good. And the key is going to be Tum Tum Nairn keeping Matt Farrell in front of him because I'm telling you, Matt Farrell off of a ball screen is dynamite. But Tum Tum is not a scorer. He is a defender and leader. So if you're going to be a defender and leader, this is the guy you're going to have to defend because Farrell is special off ball screen. With his ability, Farrell's ability to navigate ball screens, where do you see him at the next level? Interesting you ask that, my friend. I talked to a number of NBA guys out there just kind of asking, and, they, and every one of them said, look, there are a lot of worse backup point guards in the NBA than Matt Farrell. They were shocked at how high he jumps on his jump shot, and they loved his leadership and toughness. So he's going to have a real shot. I'm not saying he's... You know, going to be the greatest, but he reminds me a lot of Yogi Ferrell from Indiana who has been able to stick with the Mavericks. And that Big Ten ACC challenge will also include Duke against Indiana, North Carolina, and Michigan. All sorts of great matchups. I'm going, I think, a really good one, although they've really scuffled is Purdue at home against Louisville. Purdue, they look so good in beating Marquette at Marquette, and they have been no good here for two days. Lost to Tennessee in overtime in, in the Bahamas and then lost today to Western Kentucky. Chioza took a uh, hip check on his drive to the bucket. Third foul on Sharna. It's a lot of good point guards. We had Tremont Walker, or excuse me, Tre Tremont Waters at LSU who's a freshman. He started his career with 27. He was unbelievable late, 15 points late against Michigan in, in, out in Maui. He was he got a little dinged up. He wasn't able to come back and back it up against Notre Dame, but he's an outstanding freshman point guard. We've got some good point guards all across the country of all different ages. Kentucky has two freshman point guards trying to figure out which one of them could be the guy? Who do you think? I, well, I don't know. I, I really don't. And I, I've texted with Coach Cal about his team and, it's the first time you don't say, okay, you know, this guy is the guy. Right. You know, De'Aaron Fox, you know, John Wall. You just don't feel that way. I, I feel they're going to be a really good team. I feel like they are a team that is going to continue to get better. They play really hard, but you can't name the guy at Kentucky, I don't think. Right, it's either Quade Green or it's Shea Gilgis Alexander. Those are your two choices. Those are your two guys. And they are different in so many ways and bring different things to the table, but which one better suits your team? What will be interesting is, you know, it's not like football where if you have two quarterbacks, you have none because the position is so different. Sometimes if you have two point guards, they both get a lot better because you've got to compete. Mm -hmm. It's not handed to you. You've got to go out and you've got to play every night or else here comes the other guy. So I, I think it's going to be interesting there. But I do think they are a Final Four team by the end of the year. I just I like them a lot. I don't like them now as a great team, but I'm going to like them as the year moves forward, I promise you. So I think we've already got seven teams in the Final Four already. We can get a – there's there's two things that ESPN analysts will do, okay? <laughs> there's 372 players that will make the NBA. Yep. Oh, he's a pro. Oh, sure. He's a – they're a Final Four team. Of course. I'm telling you. Why not? I don't know who's a pro on this court right now. I know there's a ton of good college players. Now, if pro is making 10 bucks an hour or 10 bucks a game in downtown Baghdad, there's a lot of them. Yeah. I always find that funny that in basketball world, in the basketball world, now you say he's a pro only if he makes it to the NBA. But if you go to China and make $1.5 million, oh. you're a professional basketball player. Luke Herringote. Remember Luke Herringote yeah. in Notre Dame? Luke Herringote has a great life. He goes to Russia, makes a boatload of money, tax-free, yeah. in the offseason, just has an apartment downtown Chicago. It's, he's a pro. He's a pro. Yeah. But if you're going to tell me NBA guy, I can't tell you anybody on this court right now is an NBA guy. Who's got the best shot? I think Travis has a really good shot. Yeah. yeah Dave, ESPN analysts say there's 105 teams that are making the tournament. And that was Digger Phelps, right? Digger Phelps would have like, oh, they're a tournament team. All right. Okaru so with the bucket. Right. 
It's still just a field of 68, though, right? I think so. Davis. You know, the one thing about football, and I say this all the time, and every year I swear it's right, it, football plays itself out. Like, you know, everybody says, well, what if they lose? It, it just, football, for whatever reason, plays itself out. And you're talking about the fifth team, not the 69th team, for crying out loud. Why do we care so much about the 69th team or the 34th team, I guess, with that large guy? Uh, large guy? What else would we talk about in January and February, though? Yeah, I don't know. Chioza makes oh, yeah. the step back. My goodness. <laughs> Why not? Tell you what's interesting, Doug. Water finds its level. Mm -hmm. You have a 13 for 17 half. I guarantee there's going to be a 2 for 20 half at some point. It may not be today and it may not be tomorrow, but it's coming at some point. Doug Sherman with Dan Dockett here in Portland, Oregon, and you see the scoreboard, and I have to feel that if Stanford was whole, this would be a little bit of a different game. Marcus Sheffield, their junior wing from Alpharetta, Georgia, and Dorian Pickens, their senior wing from Phoenix, Arizona, both out of this game. Pickens has plantar fasciitis in his left foot. He's out for the PK-80, hope he's back in December. Sheffield also with a foot injury prior to the season. They're hoping to get him back next month, but it's a whole different team right yeah, now, Dan. It is. They have a veteran team back, but when you don't have seniors and juniors in the lineup, obviously that hurts you. I do have the cure for plantar fasciitis. I had it for nine months, and I don't know if this is legal in the NCAA, but you know what deer antler spray is? I've heard of it. Yeah, Ray Lewis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they all got in trouble for it. I had a physical therapist tell me about it, so I went and got it at a GNC store. Of course you did. It worked great. <laughs> it did. <laughs> I, know, I grew hair on the bottom of my feet, but that's all right. Just not on the top of your head. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> but it got rid of the plantar fasciitis. It did. We cover a lot of ground on these broadcast people. We do. Got a lot of time left. 9.07 on the clock. 9.07, and Florida has 91 points. <laughs> Think about that. Well, they are 15 for 22 on three-point shots. 15 for 22. This has been one of the great performances you'll ever see. And getting layups, too. Now, that's just bad defense. You have to run the floor harder than that if you're Stanford. And somebody, first guy back, has to put his head in front of the underneath the front of the rim and take away a layup. I don't care if you're down by 100. You've got to get back and do that. Four different Gators in double figures. There's an air ball for Stanford. And they might be down 100. Yeah. Battle for Atlantis has come down to Villanova and Northern Iowa. How about that? Northern Iowa is one of the great places to watch a game. Cedar Rapids, isn't it? Cedar Falls. See, there's something. I got offered a job there back in the 80s. I can't buy uh, uh, Eldon Miller. Good thing you didn't take it because no. you couldn't have found it. Right. But it is, I did a game there. It's fantastic. There are three great places that people, four, that people don't know about. Games at VCU are unbelievable with the band. Dayton, which is why we play the, the first four. Dayton sells out 16,000 is incredible. Northern Iowa and Wichita. Those four places are basketball crazy hotbed sold out insane fun places to go watch a basketball game or do a basketball game or play in a basketball game and i just had dayton in the charleston classic last week of the eight teams there by far the flyers had the most fans and they're down a little bit this year yes. they had well over a thousand people who traveled from ohio to south carolina i, I am not surprised uh, don donaher le legend took dayton to the final four as a friend of mine i coached with him and the donaher center is terrific but as I said, that's why the NCAA plays the first four in Dayton because they know they're going to sell it out. It is a great spot. Well, we've been talking a lot about the uh, 12 teams that are going to make it to the Final Four this year. Is Villanova going to make it 13 to make the Final Four? I haven't seen them in person, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have them against Temple in a few weeks, and I'm really looking forward to it. Jalen Brunson is fantastic. He's so good. And he's been fantastic from the day he showed up on campus you, three years ago. You know what? And, and even before that, Jalen Brunson led the USA team with a bunch of guys, Henry Giles and a bunch of different guys, and they were really good, and, and Brunson was the uh, was the leader of the entire deal. Reed Travis with another rebound for Stanford. Gets it back. 
offensive foul. Tell you what, go ahead and read the read. But stepping in front of Reed Travis, <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FARM. Here's a recap of day one so far, the PK-80. Marvin Bagley III, as good a freshman as there is in the country, could be the number one overall pick in the NBA draft. How about that guy for Carolina had the biggest shot of their season on their run to the national title last year, Luke May. Luke May has taken over. Really? I mean, who thought you'd be saying that? Daryl Macon for Arkansas. Jones for Texas. They had a hard-fought win over Butler here on this floor. And then uh, the story here is that man, Igor Kulichov, 10 of 14 shooting for Florida, 5 for 5 from three-point land, 26 points. And he is now out of the game as with seven minutes to go, Mike White goes deeper into his bench. I'm going to miss not mentioning Darius Nichols. Assistant coaches along with Jordan Mincy and Dusty May for Mike White. Darius Nichols was a great player at West Virginia when John Beeline went there and rebuilt the program. He he is a terrific guy and a great leader for the for kids, but he was fantastic as a player. So out of the final 640 here, if you're Stanford, is Cartwright missed the layup? What are you focusing on if you're Coach Jared Hatch? You just want your guys to play hard and give some semblance of what you've worked on. And, and I know that sounds harsh, but that's how a coach looks at it. Can we do anything that we have spent this entire fall working on? And down 30, no. And the answer is not yet, not in this game. So you hope that six and a half minutes will lead to something good. Let me give you an example, though, of what can happen. Okay. Cal is up 18 on Wichita State in the second half on Monday. 48. Now they lose. The, 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 Wichita State's down 18. Yes. To Cal. Oh, yeah. All right. This is how the thing can change so fast. 48 hours later, Cal is down 26 or loses by 26 to Division II Chaminade. Chaminade yeah. So they can come out of this okay if they get a dogged determination not to let this happen again. You know. Wichita State ended up doing pretty well. Well, we're going to have number two undefeated Miami's next game Friday when it takes on Pittsburgh at noon Eastern on ABC. That's their bid to keep their college football playoff hopes alive. So when you get done with Black Friday, you get done with your leftovers, that is what Dan Dockage is going to be doing. Oh, yeah. I'm big on college basketball. I'm going to be watching that. Michigan against Ohio State. It's about time John Beeline win a big game. Or not John Beeline. Jim Harbaugh win a big game. He doesn't want a big game. you got to beat the Buckeyes. If you're the head coach Michigan of the Wolverines, State, you, you got to beat the Buckeyes, right? got to beat your rivals, no doubt about it. Six million a year. They're not paying you to beat Indiana. I'm fired up about Auburn, Alabama. The Iron Bowl. Iron Bowl. And you know who uh, is going to be there being honored as part of a basketball-themed football weekend is Charles Barkley. Tomorrow they are... Honoring him, Charles Barkley Appreciation Night, and then on Saturday he'll become the first Auburn Tigers basketball player to have a, uh, a statue unveiled of him as the round mound to rebound. Charles Barkley in 1984 roomed with Steve Alford in the Olympic trials. Steve played at Indiana with me and was a good friend. Yep. Charles Barkley at the Olympic trials announced for the NBA. Sonny Smith, the head coach, took all of his stuff out of his dorm room and threw it on the lawn. So now they're honoring him as the guy of the year, right? I'll tell you what. Corey Alexander and I did the Charleston Classic together last week, and Sonny Smith does the yeah. radio now for Auburn basketball. Corey and I would have blown off the entire tournament just to continue listening to Coach Smith talk. Incredible. 30 minutes he had us howling just listening to the old war stories, including the ones about Charles Barkley. Absolutely. They had, they had a really good team in 84. Wow. They had Barkley, Chuck Person, a kid named Frank White. They had a bunch of All-Americans lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament to Richmond. If you want to laugh, get Sonny Smith talking about recruiting back in the old days. Some good stuff. Some great stuff. 
And he talked about the fact that he was asked to write a book. You know, he's from rural East Tennessee, and Sonny Smith has more stories, as you know, than you could fill in a huge volume of books. But he said he didn't want to write a book and cash in on stories that would make other people look yes. bad. Absolutely. So he's happy to tell the stories to those of us who aren't going to share them on the air. But uh, he is a classic, an absolute college basketball treasure. One of Wimp Sanderson and Sonny Smith. Wimp was the coach at Alabama for a long time, a rival. Mm -hmm. They had a radio show together. And people that, I never heard it, the people that heard that radio show said it was arguably the funniest. Yeah. Like, you can't understand either of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But people that heard the show will tell you it was the funniest show ever. It may be still going. I, I don't know. No, I think it's no longer. Okay. I think it went for six or seven years. But they're still telling the stories, just not in front of a microphone anymore. And Denny Crum and Joe B. Hall did the same thing in Louisville, kind of after those guys did. But you can't match Sonny Smith. No. His draw, his ability to tell a story, and the same with Wimp. Final five minutes here in Portland, Oregon. This is a quarterfinal of the motion bracket of PK-80. That's Mike Okaru, who's one of the Gators in double figures. See, that's the third time already this season in only four games they've reached the century mark. It's the best performance I've seen live all year. I, I, I'm not going to say that Duke beating that this is how yeah, it might be. Yeah, they're just still throwing them in. But Duke beating Michigan State without Marvin Bagley was a heck of a performance. And I, I thought really watching Purdue one night dismantle Marquette at home in front of a great crowd was a heck of a performance. But this is right on par with any and better, better probably than that. Big block shot by Chase Johnson. A freshman the Gators are real high on out of Ripley, West Virginia. Why not? Why not be high on this kid? This kid is long, athletic, knows how to play, and when he blocks a shot, he just swats it. He doesn't just block it. And if you're not careful, he will dunk on you. I'm careful. In this day and age, I'm not letting anybody dunk on you. I don't go under the basket. And Florida has a chance to put up the most points in day one of PK-80. Look at that. DeAndre Ballard just keeps putting them in. Now they have done that. Carolina scored 102 today. Duke 99, Arkansas 92. Florida is at 105 and counting, and Dan, there are still three and a half minutes to go. Amazing. Absolutely amazing today by Florida. We have two eight-team brackets going on here in Portland, Oregon. Our game, third quarter final in the motion bracket, has been all Florida. And next door, Michigan State is playing DePaul. You can see that game right now on ESPN. The story of the game in our game, the three ball for the Gators, Dan. Unbelievable. Started out it, like voting in Chicago early and often. They just kept whap. Igor was on fire, but the ball movement... Chielza started by driving into the middle and finding others, and there is a lot of things that are contagious in basketball. One of them is making shots. There's no question. This has been one for the ages 13 in the first half. Kulichov, 26 points. 17 for Hudson. Okaru has 15. Chioza 14 points, 11 assists. And DeAndre Ballard has come off the bench with 13 points. There's Chioza, the uh, senior from... Memphis, Tennessee, out of White Station High School, and he's been the man who makes this Florida Gators offense run. And White Station is a great basketball program. You know, he didn't – White Station's had a lot of really good players. And one of the things about Florida under Billy Donovan, they, they, they became a national name, so they can go get players from a variety of different places. See, if he had gone to White Station right there instead of to one of those prep schools where they just, you know, roll out the ball, the kid Johnson would have made that shot. Mm -hmm. But he didn't do that. Could have been coached. Yep. We've been talking about all the teams who came into this week in the top ten and how well they've done at their various events. On the flip side, how about second-ranked Arizona at the Bad Boy Mowers Battle for Atlantis? 
they could go 0 and 3. So could Purdue. They're playing each other. One of them is going 0 and 3. Unbelievable. Jay Billis and myself both said, and it may still be true, who knows, that Purdue's a Final Four team. That's the way they played it. Now, it's our 17th Final Four team that we, <laughs> we had. But really, they were that good, and they had a head start because they took their team and played yeah. you know, in the World University games. And I think a lot of people had Arizona going to the Final Four. I did, and had them going to the national championship. Now, let's be honest, though. I mean, basketball is organic. It, you know, we're sitting here on Thanksgiving Day. So a lot's going to change, and they'll end up being pretty good. But right now, holy cow. And Arizona's still without Raleigh Alkins for now. Yeah. And SMU, who beat them today, is no joke. They've got Shake Milton, who's the best player in that league. And their coach, Tim Jankovic, went over from Illinois State, where he was a really good coach. And he went to be assistant for Larry Brown. And Tim is one of the fantastic basketball minds in college basketball, and he's just kind of continued what Larry started there because SMU basketball has not been good since the 80s. Have you been to the Moody Coliseum? I have. It's I pretty did. sweet. Yeah, it is. And and they, Larry, because of his name, really got people interested in basketball. And they forgot this guy again. Different guy, same spot. De Silva for three. Yeah, when you've got uh, former president of the United States sitting courtside most of your home games like the Mustangs do, it's Not pretty bad. good. It's like Jim Laranega in Miami having LeBron show up a few times. Well, the Advocare Invitational bracket from Orlando is down to its semifinal round. Missouri, without their prize freshman, will take on St. John's. And you know the Johnnies might be the, uh, the surprise in that league this year. Their guards can really score. They can. They're quick. They're athletic. They shoot it. Interesting. There, there, there is not a great history of great Hall of Fame players coming into college basketball lately and being successful as coaches. I go to Sidney Moncrief, Isaiah Thomas, um, Willis Reed before that. But it seems like, it seems like Chris Mullen is building this slowly but surely. Now Patrick Ewing's, you know, at, at Georgetown, and he's just getting started. Ooh, nice against bad opponents. That's Trevor Stanback with the dunk. It's going to be interesting to see how those two guys continue to progress. Well, why is it not so easy necessarily for somebody who has spent so much time as Cartwright has the steal? You know, you know your way around St. John's. You know your way around Georgetown, around those leagues. You've got the name. You've got the prestige. You've spent 20, 25 years in the NBA in one capacity or another. Why is it not just a slam dunk that you can make things happen at the college I level? I don't think coaches have respected it. Well, I'll give you an example. Clyde Drexler, one of the great guys. But he was at Houston. He would show up for a game. Games at 7. He would drive his car down the ramp at 655. Mm -hmm. You know, college coaches in there all day grinding and grinding and grinding. I think sometimes great players just rely on who they are as opposed to their work ethic. That's my sense of it. And it's tough to go both ways, I think. And now we just took a look at Mike White who coached, of course, under Billy Donovan, and Billy's gone to OKC. Now, it doesn't hurt that you've got the talent that he has, but he has shown the ability to go back to the NBA where he had played and spent time under Rick Pitino, and he has been able to do it seamlessly. Well, Rick, you know, Rick Pitino kind of started. He didn't really start that. College, Chuck Daly coached in college for a little bit. But, you know, those are two very separate games. And the best thing for college coaches going to the NBA is when a player gets in trouble, they don't have to deal with it. You call your, you right. man, call your agent. Yep. And it's all X's and O's. Brad Stevens is probably the best. Brad took over a team that was okay, but had cap room, was going to make some draft choices. And Brad's just done an amazingly good job there. Just lost last night and we were winning 16 in a row. But yeah. Got to get Carl's a shot here. We got to get one up. Cartwright. Oh, man! Okaro with another block shot. This time, though, uh, he picks up the personal foul. Hey, Okaro just hustled down, not giving any quarter, man. He just sprinted down, and good for Cartwright going in to dunk this. Must have gotten something on the right hand, I guess. Hmm. Oh, man, that was a heck of a block.
Well, Stanford without two of its starters got jumped from the start by Florida. Our final quarterfinal of the night coming up between the Buckeyes and the Bulldogs. Number 17, Gonzaga, should have a real good crowd here. That's a fan base that travels well, and uh, we're not that far from campus, relatively speaking. Yeah, I'm not thinking the Buckeyes are going to have many. No. You might be the only one they're, in the building. They're, they're going to have my wife, my ex-wife. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> There's no good that can come from that statement out of your mouth. We're all friends. Daughter be here watching her brother, stepdaughter watching her stepbrother. Can't wait. Get in there. Krause ah. able to get the shot off. That kid had gone to a real high school. <laughs> Prep school guys get mad. <laughs> They're fun to get mad at. Coming up. There's Andrew Dockage right there. Sports Center. There he is right on the left. There. We need a telestration. Yeah, I have no telestration. Can you get it? No. I mean, you can pick your son out. I don't know if the audience can pick out the, your son. Well, he, uh, he doesn't have the same hair, so we're all good. I well, told him whenever he makes fun of me, I said, it's coming, brother. Oh, yeah. Can you see it yet on him? No. No. Not even a little bit. I don't think it's coming. Some guys, you see the signs in college and you know it's trouble. <laughs> me. <laughs> you know it's trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is the most points scored in the game versus a Power 5 conference opponent this season. 108-87, our final score. We'll have the final game of the night here at the PK-80 in 30 minutes here on ESPN2 as Ohio State takes on number 17, Gonzaga. For Dan Dockage and our entire production crew, I'm Doug Sherman. First, let's send it to SportsCenter with Kenny Mayne and Max Pretos.